Hello once again from the workbench. Um, if you noticed last episode, we built our horizontal and vertical stabilizers. Um, now it's time to move on to the fuselage. Now, when we do this, you're going to take a lot of gratification in this work because we're going to make a lot of advancement really fast with this build because it's a simple three-piece per side. Now, I've already um, taken the manual and looked at how to identify the parts and the sheets of balsa, and I've already punched them out uh, for this one side. So, and I've already fitted uh, this one side together, so really we have three major components to the fuselage side, and then we're going to add the stiffeners to it. Um, let me make a couple adjustments. I'll set my coffee cup down for once, and we'll uh, get to gluing the fuselage sides together. I'll be right back with you. Okay, here we are. I have our parts laid out, the three major components. According to our plans, right here we have an upper fuse side, a lower fuse side, and an aft fuse side. Now we're gonna take those parts, we're gonna trial fit them. You, you kind of put everything together first, see how well they fit, and uh, sand accordingly to make your adjustments. Um, they may be warped or bowed, could be anything, a number of things. But fortunately, when I trial fitted all this stuff a minute ago, everything went right together like it was supposed to. Now I've already laid down our wax paper to keep us from sticking to our board. And we're going to use our T-pins we discussed in our building supply video. Kind of hold these things. I'm going to start with the upper fuse. What I'll do, I'll put a T-pin up front here, keep us from sliding forward. We're just using this to kind of help us hold it in place. Let me get it kind of square. There's a good corner there to put one. Another good place to put one there. Well, we want to be careful that we're not putting a T-pan in a place where we need to butt up against. So I'm just kind of check here where I want to put one. Right there is a good spot. So I'll make sure we're where we need to be. Okay, that's good and solid. Now the, the fun part. <clears throat> we need to make sure we have everything aligned really well. Okay, so this is the bottom fuse piece. We'll take this and we'll slide it up flush, just like we did when we did our um, elevator sections, our forward and aft. Okay, same top and bottom here. I really like that position, so we're going to go ahead and pin that there. Notice I'm not piercing the wood, I'm just going on the outside there to hold it. Okay, now I'm going to push up, make sure we're butted up against our top half here, and we're just working our way back. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing back here because this is a fairly long piece. So there's an opportunity for it to pull apart, and we don't want that. So I'm just going to push down and push that up to it. Grab another pin. Lock that in place there. We're, we're pretty much locked in right here. Now we have our third piece. Just so you guys know, this is how they fit those big airplanes in those tiny boxes. Because we're already longer than our box. Okay. Slide that in. It's an interlocking system. There we go. I have to unplug. But if you'll notice, we got uh, our interlocking system. And what that does, that maximizes our surface area to achieve the maximum hold for our glue. Okay, let me get you plugged back in here so we don't die in the middle of this. Okay. I'm just looking here, making sure we're good to go. And I'm going to pin this in place as well. Okay, I'm going to push a little bit of forward pressure, make sure we're in our groove well. We shouldn't slide out of this, but I'm not going to take any chances. Okay, we got blocked up, blocked in. I'm going to put one there just for good measure. That will make me feel better about it. You know, if you, if you got to do it to make yourself feel better about it, do so. You know, this is a hobby. 
we want to do everything right, but we want to enjoy it as well. So I'm going to put one there just for good measure. Make sure everything feels nice and butted up. Now we'll get our thin CA. Tower hobby stuff right here, the good stuff. And sometimes after gluing these things, we'll create a seal. No big thing, we'll just get a pin. Poke it through. Okay. Now we're ready to glue. And just like you know, a little bit of a gap there. We'll seal up right here. Anytime we use our thin CA, we want to make sure we have a good butt together. Just put a drop there. Come back over here. Put a drop here. Good. I'm just going down, tacking everything in place. That way we can make sure everything's where we want it before we actually go to glue it. Okay, up here where we had this gap, right? All right? We got a little bit of a gap right here, which is fine. And what we'll do, we'll get our medium CA. Oh, my nozzles are picking up on me. Okay. Oh. Now we're cooking with gas. We'll take a little bit, put it right there, and we'll get our kicker. And what that does, that actually helps that set up really fast so we don't have to sit there and hold it. And we've got this gap right here. And I'm not really comfortable just leaving that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to very politely run a bead of glue in this gap. Like so. Now we are going to stick to our wax paper that way. No big deal. That's why we use wax paper. It's better than sticking to your bare table or door or your foam board. You'll pull up a big chunk of that. And always, I want to remind you to make sure that you use your glues and everything in the well ventilated area. They're not as bad as. Okay. Use your glues in a well ventilated area. Um, they're not as bad as older airplane glues like they had back in the 60s where, man, wow, man. That's not that problem. This is a type of super glue, and the fumes will burn your eyes. I mean, that's it. I mean, it, it'll make you tear up and it hurts. And uh, our kicker that we use has has a smell to it as well. So just make sure you're not closed up in your mom's basement or uh, sealed up in a room. I've got plenty of ventilation here. Um, just make sure you do that, okay? All right, now back to the build. Okay, now that we got that pretty well tacked together, I'm going to go ahead and pull my pins because our CA holds really well. It's really lightweight. It does awesome. Okay, now I know we're stuck up here. Not as bad as I thought, though. Very good. Okay, so we don't lose any of these guys. They're not very expensive, but I'm kind of a tight ass. I like to hang on to stuff as long as I can. You know, get get your full use out of them. There's no sense in throwing equipment away that is still usable. Okay, get them to where they don't spill out on the floor. And that, you don't want to step on there, I'm sure. Okay, we're just going to run our hand under there like that. We have a fuselage side, but before we set it off to the side, I'm going to flip it over here. I'm going to come back and make sure we're over our wax paper. And then we'll come back with our thin CA. And I'm going to follow 
these entire lines so that way we're glued all the way. And if we're poking up a little bit, that's okay. We're going to come back and sand all this before we cover it. Remember, sand, sand, sand. This. See, just a little bit goes a long way. Okay. Now, see, builder's preference here. Cap that back up so we don't plug another nozzle. I've got my other one soaking in acetone right now. Um. Some builders, kind of a, a we're coming back here, uh, kind of a builder's note. <clears throat> Some builders, and it, it depends really, it varies on the model, will say, okay, we glued it on this side, we're going to flip it over and glue it on the other side. Well, for these uh, fine tower hobbies adhesive, the thin CA, it actually penetrates the whole wood. We're working with uh, 3 16 balsa here, or excuse me, 8 inch balsa on this one. And it soaks all the way through. It penetrates all the way to the bottom. It will stick to your wax paper. There's no need in it because we glued one side. We're done. We flip it over and we go ahead and glue. All we're doing then is just adding weight unnecessarily. Um, also, the thing to remember, the more glue and the more kicker we use, the harder we're making our sanding job. And I don't know about you. Though it's, it's, it's a necessary evil, I don't like to sand, but we have to to have a good looking model when we're done. And it's necessary also for some of our components to fit together. Since I've got this one side completed, um, here I'll go ahead and pull it up and show you. There are two sides, a left side and a right side. Pick your poison, but once you set it to the top and bottom, you have your left and your right side. Or excuse me. When we add our stiffeners, we're going to cover that here in a little bit after I reset my workbench and the wax paper. Get the cheap stuff. There's no need in buying name brand. If they got wax paper at the dollar store, get it. Get a couple rolls because you're going to go through it like toilet paper. Anyway, here's one fuselage side. I'm going to go ahead. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and add our stiffeners to this. I'll be right back. Okay, I went to our box and located our light ply sheet that contains our stiffeners. It's all die cut and actually Great Plains does a really good job in their manufacturing process of getting these things die cut instead of die crunched. And the way that works is they'll load a sheet of wood into a machine, whether it be balsa, basswood, light ply, whatever. And it's basically a knife in the shape of the part, okay? And what they'll do, they'll just stamp it. And there you go. Your parts are out. Now see if you'll notice, these guys are kind of rough around the edges. Not awful, but needs a little help. Okay, so we're going to come in and sand these down with our awesome 3M sanding products. And the thing you got to pay attention to this particular one, our stiffeners are actually some pieces that lock together like so, to form the top and the bottom. So we're going to sand those, make sure they fit good. They actually fit really well just out of the sheet. So I'm just going to reinsure that they do so. We're going to fit it, make everything nice and smooth. Then we'll come back and we'll apply the stiffeners to the fuselage side that we just put. Just a quick note here while I'm sanding this stuff down. You don't want to bevel the edges or anything like that because this is a part that's going to lay on a part to stiffen it up. That's why it's called a stiffener. All you want to do, just go around it, get rid of all the burrs, all the splinters, and things of that nature. That way we just have a nice part, okay? Okay. I hope this works out because I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Through the lens, anyway. Okay, we have our top and our bottom piece. I've sanded them where they fit this is our only interlocking place right here okay so they fit really good we've got rid of all of the splinters and rough edges so run your hands all across it and we'll 
still nothing bad. Okay, now the way we do this, we're going to use our medium CA because we don't want it to set instantly because we have to work with it a little bit. Now don't do a rookie mistake and I still do it every now and then. We got to glue the opposite side. Okay, see how it don't match up? Match up. We want the glue on this side right here. So what I'm going to do I'm going to glue in a zigzag pattern, okay? Start at the front and go all the way to the back. Just holding it down here, apply a little bit of glue, and I'm just going to zigzag it. Now, what's going to happen when we put this down, that glue is going to ooze out. I don't want to get that in the hole there. And cover all the places. that are not glued. Okay, so we're depending on that to ooze out. Okay, now the fun part. We want to make sure before we push down on this that we got this thing lined up on our fuselage perfectly because everything is going to line up according to these guys right here, okay? So we're at the top, we have the front lined up. And honestly, if we're just a touch off, it's not that big of a deal. We can um, come back with our Dremel tool and sand it out of the way. Now these holes, you're probably wondering what they're for. Those are for our wing dowels, or actually our rubber band dowels. You have the option to either bolt on the wing or rubber band it on. We're going to rubber band it on because that's what we need when we're learning how to fly. And the reason is if we have a rough landing and we get a wing tip or something, that will allow the wing to kind of jostle around a little bit and not break anything. Now, if we're bolted into the uh, fuselage, it's a real rigid setup, which is a good thing, but it's also a bad thing. You won't have that forgiveness to allow stuff to jostle around and get out of the way where your rubber bands will allow it to flex. Man, lucky there, that came out perfect. So what we're gonna do, I'm just setting this on here. There's no glue on it. Make sure we're lined up good, which is fine. That looks really good. So now I'm gonna take it, flip it, glue it. So just like we did the top piece, I'm gonna do a zigzag thing here. Forth. Try to stay away from the edge about an eighth of an inch if you can. The reason I say that is because I didn't right there. And it's going to ooze out, which is going to make you hinder. No, it's not really even going to hinder our sanding. It's just we're going to notice it. It's going to be a little tougher spot to uh, sand when we come back and sand all this. Okay. We're in our notch. We're lined up along the bottom side here. Perfection. Awesome. I'm just going to hold some pressure on it until the uh, CA grabs hold and add pressure. It takes about 10 seconds for the medium to grab hold. And honestly, I try to stay away from the kicker because that makes sanding tough. And you're probably going to hear that a lot throughout this build. Um, you're going to see me use it and then cuss it because of what it does for sanding. Okay, we're down. Now, see our CA, though it's tacked up, it um, still takes 24 hours to cure. Now, what I'm going to do, just to add a little bit of reinforcement here, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back in our lock here, and I'm just going to put some thin in there. Probably don't even really have to, because we're going to cover this with epoxy later. But I just want to get that locked in there with a little bit of thin. That way it goes into the wood and seeps in everywhere and just grabs a hold. Okay, because this is basically we're adding the backbone to the airplane with these two pieces. We have one more to do, 
and then our right hand fuselage side will be done. In a crowded workbench up here. Now this is for the tail section, okay? This is where our control rod, this is a control rod exit, our elevator, or excuse me, our horizontal stabilizer is going to mount right here, okay? So we need to stiffen all this up a little bit, okay? And what we do, we just match it up, no big deal. That. Sticky fingers. And I'm just going to kind of test fit. Make sure very good here. That looks, that looks really good. Now, see, that's supposed to set just inside because what's going to happen, we're going to have sheets when we come back and do the top and bottom that are going to lay in right here, okay? So we got to make sure that we leave those edges exposed for that purpose. So that looks really good. That looks like a really good fit. And remember, it's set, flip it, glue it, okay? A lot of these little skinny areas don't have to worry about zigzag so much. Just get you a nice little bead in there. And as we get wider, we can zigzag it like so. Doesn't have to be perfect. You just don't want so much of a mess to sand later. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right, here we go. This is a fuselage side, your right hand fuselage side, because this will go to the inside. And that'll be the outside of the airplane. Pretty nifty. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the other side. No reason to make this longer than we need to on the video aspect of it. I'll go ahead and manufacture the other side real quick. And I'll see you guys again when we do the tops and bottoms. Now that we have that situated, um, we have our left and our right sides built. Before we can join the two and have a fuselage with the top and the bottom on it, we need to make a couple parts. Uh, we need to make the firewall, and we also need to make um, a wing bolt plate. Now, you're probably asking, why are we going to make a wing bolt plate when we're going to rubber band our wing on? Well, it needs to be there for strength to help hold everything together. Now, I've already punched them out. All these parts are going to be light ply. Now, we're going to laminate these. We're going to use epoxy. Now, we're going to have three wing bolt plates, okay? That's what they look like. We're going to have three. And the important thing to remember, we got to lay these cross grain, okay? We're going to look at them. I know you can't see on the camera, but two of these, the grain is running left to right, and one of them is up and down. The one that we're running up and down is the one we're going to put in the middle. We Left, right, left, so on. It just makes it stronger that way. We're going to use epoxy, and the first thing we need to do is mix our epoxy. You guys have probably been waiting for this. Well, geez, if I don't mix it right, it's not going to come out right. True, but it's real simple to remember how to re mix your epoxy. It's 50-50. Give me a second, and we'll show you how to do it. Okay, here we are. We're ready to mix our epoxy. We've got a, an epoxy cup. Actually, this is just a bathroom cup available at, Wal at your department store, Walmart, whatever. You can buy like a hundred of them for three bucks, whatever. They're cheap. Okay. Here we have our epoxy. And we also need a mixing stick and something to apply it with. Normally I have brushes, but I just ran out. I've got to buy some more. No big deal. We can still use a scrap piece of stick. This is a scrap piece of basswood I had laying around. It would work great for mixing and applying it as well. Now what I'm using today is Great Plains 30-minute epoxy. Okay, it's a two-part. 50-50. The way I do this, I'll take our resin, okay, first. Set that off to the side for now. And what I'll do, I'll count out the drops. Now, if you see, <clears throat> the important thing is, I don't know. Cut your hole the same size on both of them. That way your drops are 
uniform. They're the same size from your resin to your hardener. Now what I'll do, I'll count out 10 drops because this is we're going to use this mix to do our bolting plate and our firewall. So we're going to need a little bit. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go 15 drops. I always heard they have more than not enough. And I'll just count out the drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. We'll go ahead and cap that, set it aside. Now it's time for our hardener. Again, same size orifice in the end. You cut that when you get these, so make sure they're the same size, whether they're bigger or smaller. Make sure they're the same size. Now we're going to count off 15 drops again, but with the hardener. Now the thing to remember, once we mix this, the clock starts ticking on our 30 minutes. Now it's a 30 minute set, 24 hour cure. Okay, so we got 30 minutes to do all our work. It shouldn't really take that long. Okay, what I'm doing, I'm letting gravity do its work here. Getting the air out of the nozzle. Yeah, it can take a second here. That way we don't get a blast of air while we're counting our drops. Here. Okay, it looks like we're ready. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15. Okay. I've got my parts laid out here. This will be our first one. The grain is running this way. And then we'll go ahead and start mixing. Okay. Just stay calm. Don't get in a panic. We're fine. We're good on time. Okay. Get a good uniform mix and it's probably hard to tell on the camera there but you see it kind of turned slightly foggy which is fine that means we're our two chemicals are mixing together and our catalyst is starting to do its job get it good and mixed together okay I'll get a little dab of it here on my stick and then we'll apply it to our first piece. Okay. Some up here on this guy. If you have the bulk up, that's fine. Just make sure it's in the middle. Now, if this one's grain is running this way, I'm going to get the one where the grain is running this way, which is right here. And I'll set that on top and get it lined up. Kind of push it down a little bit to get it to seat. A little oozes out, that's fine. We can sign that off. And then we'll take our third piece. Get a little bit of epoxy on our stick here. Spread it around good there. Okay, and then apply that one, and there is our plate, our wing bolt plate, and our stiffen. Right, so I've got kids down here playing as well. So, okay, we'll just set that off to the side, and now. We're going to do our firewall while we have some epoxy mixed up. Again, I already poked them out, kind of sanded them a little bit. We have one A, one B, and then one C. Okay. What we need to do, this one has a bunch of dimples in it. That's where we're going to drill holes. So we're going to apply it face down. Like so, we're going to get some epoxy. We have one B here. Okay. I'm going to 
put some of that good stuff on there. Now, if this were a sailplane, I'd be a little leery of using epoxy for weight. But this is a powered plane. And this being a firewall, the one thing epoxy is really good for is fuel proofing. You know, because the nitro fuel has a synthetic castor oil in it. It's like a two-stroke. And it blows oil everywhere. And it has a very unique smell. A lot of pilots that fly nitro swear they just fly nitro for the smell of the fuel alone. So this not only is like an awesome glue that holds everything together, and it's also fuel proofing as well as we build our land. Now we want to make sure we get everything lined up, tabs to tabs, ears to ear. That way when we put this thing together, tab A matches slot B. If, that, if we don't do that, we're going to have a real problem and we're going to have to go to the hardware store and buy some more light plot. Okay, there's 1A, 1B, now we have 1C. And the way this one's going to fit, it's going to line up up top. Okay? Like so. And we're going to call it good. And it's going to set just inside the tabs. So I'm going to take 1C. And I'm going to apply epoxy to it. Looks like I mixed just the right amount to do this. Spread that on there. Sort of hold that OS engine nicely. Okay. We have our epoxy on there. Now, believe it or not, later on, after we get everything put together, we're going to coat this thing with epoxy to fuel proof it. And it also makes it a little stouter and get everything nice and lined up. Kind of push on it a little bit. That way we get the epoxy where it needs to go down in the green of the wood. There we go. See, we just built two major components all within the set time. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to do today for the simple fact um, we have epoxy parts and the rest is going to be CA together. But these have to be cured before we can go any further. Okay, so I think we're done. It's Sunday. I've got family dinner here in just a little bit. And I'll, what we'll probably do is pick back up here tomorrow evening. Let these things set for 24 hours. That way they're cured. 30 minute set time, 24 hour cure time. Remember that. That way you don't jump in and start playing with stuff way too early and get in trouble. Okay. Now, what to do with this last little bit of epoxy. What I normally do, since I'm using a stick here, I'll just go ahead and snap it off, stick it in our cup, and what I'll do, I'll use that for a gauge. Okay. A little secret after this thing cures. And if I did it right, this thing should be like hard plastic. When it cures, I can grab this stick, wiggle it loose. And what's going to happen is all that cured epoxy is going to pull loose from the cup and come on out and we can use it again. I'm going to set the rest of our scrap off to the side for another day and another time. And uh, that concludes today. We'll pick back up tomorrow or so when we pull the rest of the uh, fuselage formers or the bulkheads. And we actually take our left and our right fuselage side and make a fuselage out of all of it. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.